back. Now, in a documentary that aired last night, Will Young opened up about sibling grief for the first time as he revealed how his world fell apart after losing his twin brother, Rupert, to suicide two years ago. Uh, Colleen and Janet, you both sadly know firsthand, and you watched it, of course, last night as well, but here's a little bit of what Will had to say last night. Very moving documentary. Um, tough to watch in places, actually, Clean. I know a lot of it resonated with you and, and just how people grieve differently as well. I mean, speaking about his brother was a way of making him feel like he, he's still here. Mm. And it doesn't work for everybody, necessarily. Um, no, it, it, it doesn't. You know, people... Um, m you know, my family, since we lost Bernie, you know, they, they celebrate every birthday, every Christmas, even, you know, the day that she passed away. And I find that really hard because I think I, oh, I think I get through it because a she's always there and I always I do think about her. But I, for some reason, my brain goes, it's okay, she's still living in Surrey, mm -hmm. and that for me is how I deal with it because as soon as I'm reminded that she doesn't and she's no longer here, it's one of those moments where you think if I. If I start this, I won't be able mm -hmm. to get out of bed yeah. in the morning, mm -hmm. you know? But I, equally, I understand from my sister's and brother's point of view that they do want to raise a glass to her on her birthday because they feel if they don't, it's almost like we've forgotten about <laughs> her, you know? So I think grief is such a... And we all judge people on how they grieve, you know? So I, I would go, oh, I don't know how they get out of bed in the morning, you know, and yet there they are having a good time. But equally, that's their way of dealing with it. And I think we have to be really, really careful how we judge people and how they're grieving because it is so different mm. for everybody you know yeah it was really interesting in the film uh seeing will's mum and dad talk about it and his dad could barely mm. face the camera when talking about their the boy's childhood i found it a, a really uncomfortable watch it really resonated with me because i had um unlike will i had a quite fractious relationship with my sister <clears throat> we um, were very, very competitive when we were younger. We looked completely different. She had dark, curly hair when she was a little girl. Look, she's all smiley and happy, <laughs> and I'm the sulky cow, the taller one, looking, you know, uh, uh, resentful of having a younger sister. There's no point you ever grew out of that, is there? <laughs> no, exactly. But the thing is, we did... Uh, when um, my dad died, it did bring us together. Mm. And then when I was told that my sister had lung cancer, mm. I, it, our relationship became very close. And then I had all this rage at the way she was being treated in mm -hmm. hospital. And I, I felt so angry that not enough was being done to save her. And then I felt angry with her that she was smoking because mm. she went, well, I'm going to die. I might as well die smoking because that's one of my few mm. pleasures. And I think that I felt rage, I felt a sadness, I felt incompetent, there was nothing I could do. I mean, I did what I could. I got her in the way that I know best, you know, knew best to help her. I got her to write a diary of her experiences in hospital because she was on a mixed ward, which was shocking, really, really shocking. And at a time when the government said they were phasing them out and they obviously were not, and then she was only taken to a hospice when she was lapsing into unconsciousness mm. and it was kind of pointless cos she was at death's door. And I think that she uh, got solace out of writing the diary. I got something from it and it was published in the press mm. and eventually I got to meet government ministers and to argue, you know, even more strongly for... Um, changes to be made, you know, in mixed wards more quickly. When, when she did pass, how did you deal with the grief of her? Oh, well, I felt... Did you feel you had to get up and carry on, or...? I carried on. I mean, on the day she actually died, um, I wasn't... I left the hospice before she died because I couldn't see the point. She was unconscious. Mm. And then I um, went... I was doing a tour of my one-woman show and I went and did a show. So did you find... I went on stage some people and love, did a comedy show. Yeah, some people love talking about that person all the, all the mm. time and then other people don't want mm. to. It's like when Brenda first came back, you know, after losing mm. Jamal and she was saying, make sure no-one hugs me. I don't want yeah. people to hug mm. me. You know, to some people, they feel that they want to, but it, it's such a... I couldn't really talk a, a lot about it because I... In fact, I haven't really talked a lot about it because... I just feel it's very, very personal. And um, mm. watching uh, Will talk about his brother, because there was the 
two extra components mm. into this, uh, you know, story. One was having an identical twin, mm. Mm. which is, you know, I know identical twins and how close they are and how it must feel like you've lost a limb, mm. you know, to lose. Mm. A, a sibling who's a twin, and the second thing was that his brother was an addict. And from my own experience, living with an addict, it's um, it, it takes away your, it sucks all the life out of you. And when Will said in the film that he couldn't stop the process of his brother yeah, it must killing so himself, helpless. I, he felt so hopeless. I think that is something that's very hard. Uh, to live uh, with. And just, just as you explained how it, it, towards the end of your, your sister's life, Jan, it, you almost had time to grieve before she passed away, mm. well, which, I, which, you know, they, they I, didn't, I well, didn't. A lot of families don't have that chance to... I know, to, but it's to... not, because you're still hoping there'll be no, a of, miracle. Of course you are, but even the time to write a diary... Even, oh, yeah. it's, it's not as a shock. Uh -huh, you, you know, know they're going, but when somebody takes... Not like, that it's ever easy, brother. of course it's not. No, but it's when a it shock. actually happens, yeah. you'd like, I lost a stepson to cancer, you know, stomach cancer, and he died within two weeks of diagnosis. Oh, God. And that, watching my husband lose his son, and then my husband couldn't talk about it. The grief was so profound. Okay. He was incoherent and he had a breakdown and couldn't be in a room with children for two years. Yeah. I mean... Th that's the thing. In the context of grief, I think there's something that Will, Will said, um, that before his, his brother died, it wasn't his story to tell. Mm -hmm. And after he died, he's waited some time before he tells that story. And I think it's like what you said, it's about allowing people to go through the process. Mm. It's such a personal thing. Yeah, it really um, is. So to either be forced to talk about it or not giving your space to heal. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we're talking about someone who has an addiction in, in any circumstance, whether it's addiction, mental health, or just an, an illness. It's about allowing people their space um, to tell their story when they're ready, and especially mm -hmm. when it's about a family member, because it's not their story. It's just letting people grieve exactly. at, at their own pace. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. very, very personal issue. Um, there's always a, a lot of help and various websites on grief, if you need it, on our website.